Hi everyone. Hi, with Amy and Boris. Today Hello. we're going to talk about desiring God's will. And desiring? Desiring God's will. In other words, that's, that's what we should aim for. That's what we should want to do all the time. Not just most of the time or sometimes. Not desire our will. Not ours. No. Ours could be misleading. So, but uh, we're going to start with a prayer because we need the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth. O God, you taught the hearts of the faithful, your faithful, by the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant that by the gift of the same spirit we may be truly wise and always rejoice in his consolation. We ask this through, through the same Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so uh, we should desire God's will, want to do only what is pleasing to Him, and pretty much uh, put Him first. For He says, He holds nothing good back for those who love Him. And should we love Him, we will be obedient. The things and the wonders that He does are things we can't even imagine. And I'll give you little examples. Uh, I, I'm not working out yet. I stay in shape. I don't know if it's because uh, he establishes the work of my hands and I'm more busy throughout the day or I kneel more, but I don't know how in the world I'm in shape. And so how about the shoe covers that I wear for mopping the floor? I used to change them every day. I've worn the same shoe covers for six months. He can make anything work out. He can make anything happen. We let the things of the world and stress and work get in the way and we put off God and we put him second and not by our works. We can never really make anything, anything that's successful, anything that's good comes from God. And he can make you or break you and he can make things that work work out. I had, I was not doing what I was supposed to be doing. I gave in to sloth when I first got fishes and I was mesmerized by them. So God said, if this is a distraction or this causes you to sin, I'll take it away. He says, if your right arm causes you to sin, cut it off. Better to be without an arm than to lose your soul forever. So, but now the same situation, uh, they're not dying because now I do all the things that I need to do first before I allow myself to relax and stare at the fishes. Uh, so basically God uh, will as long as you're willing to sacrifice and step out of your comfort zone and deny the flesh and do penance and do goodwill whenever possible and uh, just w in, whenever the situation presents itself if the, there's a sacrifice that needs to take place even if it means sacrificing sleep you take up on it because you are being obedient to God and lo and behold, I used to get sick all the time, little head cold here and there. Now, even if I'm sick, I don't feel symptoms. And I, uh, there's people around me that are sick, but they don't get sick. And so God said that in the Bible, you will not get sick. Now, there are instances where we do suffer from illnesses and we do get sick. And only God knows the reason for that. Some of the reasons may be that you're very holy and you can save souls that way. You can help save souls that way. Other reasons may be the sanctification of your own soul or the sanctification of another. Uh, if, if, it, if it's God's will, he knows what he's doing. Uh, so it, basically, if we want things, if we want to f feel peace and we want to feel joy, we should always be focused on what is pleasing to God and what is in the service of God before any action, before we speak, before we do anything. And uh, always to realize that we need God for everything. We're very small and we're nothing without Him. And, and not to think that we're capable of anything outside of His help, for He is our strength and He always provides. On our own, it's a very dark alley, and the devil's not kind. <laughs> so, basically, you, you have to desire God's will, because if you do, that's how you feel complete. And that's how you produce harmony within your family and your environment. And that's how you uh, end up doing things well, and you're diligent. 
and you're responsible and you're proud of yourself and even you're not running into people that are mean to you and even if these people are normally mean God works it within them touches their heart and everybody's nice and maybe it's because you've turned to a nicer person yourself that's also a possibility but just everything gets better and you love better you become a better person and God brings out the best in us but it starts with prayer and seeking him in every way how do we desire his will well we keep his commandments sacred we visit him. If he said, do this in memory of me to receive the Eucharist, we do so. We And that can only be found in church. Uh, and that, uh, as long as it says, you hide me under your sepulcher. The sepulcher is the adoration, where you sit in front of Je this, the adoration and you admire Jesus. You try to do that daily if possible. 30 minutes would be nice. Um, and you pray, you read the Bible, you read spiritual things if you can. You try to help others by sharing your testimony and leading by example, loving unconditionally, especially those that are your opposition or whenever in adversity. It, do things that outside the box, things that are shock people. Show them how amazing God is and how amazing his power is, that what he can do. And it, once they see the profound transformation in you, there's no stopping. Uh, how many souls you can get to know him and once they know him they find purpose in life and aren't we one of those many of us lost not knowing not feeling fulfilled not knowing what it is that will give us happiness these things of the world they're only short and they're shallow and they don't really they only go so far but God's joy and God's peace is everlasting, even in the midst of storm, even if you're treading water, even if you're hurt, you still find a way, reason to be joyful. You look at the bright side, you don't let it affect you. God is within her, she will not be moved. Listen to the Psalms. The Psalms are very healing. There is a St. Augustine, the son of St. Monica, said that he first was transformed into sainthood when he read the Psalms. And there's apps, you version rest, will play the Psalms all day long if you ask Alexa for loop. So uh, it's, it's um, God will guide you and he will direct you. He just needs you trying and he needs you trying your best, not just trying minimally or only trying sometimes or most of the time, but all the time, trying your very best. And we will, we will fall short. Our very, our very best isn't good enough. Only he's good enough, and he will pick up where we fall short. And he knows the heart. He knows how badly you want to have a relationship with him. Because in our heart, deep down inside, we love him. We know that he's our creator. We know he's the only, ma he's the last man standing. When our whole world crashes down, when everybody d disappoints us or and our efforts seem useless, He's the last man standing and he will pick us up and he will say, I'm here for you and I will help you and I will provide and I will give you strength and I will give you endurance and you will learn from this, my child, and you will grow. And so say to yourself over and over again, I am a child of God and therefore I am precious in his eyes and I will behave as so. And the more precious you are to him, the more he appreciates your love. Yes, amen to that. And so, well, you just you need to do the right thing all the time, yeah. Well, oh, even termites. We used to have termites all the time. Mm. How long has it been since we've had termites? Don't forget his benefits. Termites are year long. Uh, we've fumigated many times. Nothing ever works. Just like no medication worked for me. And the only thing that cured me was God. Uh, no therapy worked for me. And so fumigating never worked. We bombed the house. Can't get rid of the termites. Oh, but we took God seriously. We kneel every morning. We start every day with prayer. Uh, we go to church every day. We are in front of the adoration. We confess whenever we sin as soon as possible. 
uh, we don't we take God seriously. And we so don't or we do? We don't we try we don't take it for granted uh. as much anymore. I'm sure we do sometimes because uh, we're faulty, we're sinners. Okay. But we are taking him more seriously. Yes, we are. And so now there's no termites. Every once in a while, I see a wing or two when I'm sweeping, just to God let, because God wants to remind me of His benefits and let me know they still exist and they could be there. So, uh, just it also increases your faith, doing the right thing, knowing that you're doing what's difficult, because you're doing it for the glory of God increases your faith and with faith you can overcome sin sin and conquer the world amen to that and see you on sunday yes it's sundays now holy day that's when uh, the radio show will air 30 minutes on series xm and so be blessed don't forget to be kind to everyone and yourself love as best as you can uh, don't lose hope. Keep the faith. And may God's peace be with you. God bless you all.